Good morning and welcome to Chesapeake College. My name is Cliff Coppersmith and it's my honor to serve as this college's president. It's my pleasure to welcome to you, uh, to all of you to our campus um, on a suspicious event in which we'll hear from our two distinguished guests, Senator Ben Cardin and Senator Chris Van Hollen. We'd like to thank them for their work on behalf of the Eastern Shore. In particular, our thanks go out for their support of a recently awarded $1.2 million in congressional directed spending that will support both our welding and metal fabrication and help us launch a new advanced manufacturing program. Before I introduce them, I would like to acknowledge the other special guests we have with us this morning. I hope to God I don't leave somebody out, uh, including, uh, did uh, Kent County arrive? Oh, uh, Mr. Ron Pithian from uh, Kent County, uh, Caroline County Commissioner Travis Breeding. Uh, I know our Dorchester Council member Mike Detmer is here. I don't know where he's right there. Um, also, I think we have Jim Moran from Queen Anne's County. Um, I would also like to thank Chesapeake College Board of Trustees Bob Grace. Uh, he's our chair, uh, Vice Chair Reza Jafari, and also uh, Milton Nagel from Caroline County, one of our member trustees, is with us as well. We also have President of the Chesapeake College Foundation Board, Bobby Sheehan, and Vice President uh, Linda Friday with us. We also have uh, very special guests and strong advocates for the college, uh, Mr. Mike uh, Miller and uh, Severin Miller. Uh, we're very grateful for their presence today. I'm trying to see Todd Moen also with Queen Anne's County. Um, we also have staff, which I'll get to in a minute, but we have Dan Schneckenberger from the Workforce Investment Board, chair of the uh, newly installed Dan Lazard with the Workforce Investment Board, and Scott Warner with the Mid-Shore Regional Council. Did I leave anybody else out? I'll get to college staff in just a moment. Okay. Um, I'd like to acknowledge college staff that are with us today, especially Michelle Hall, who wrote our congressionally directed spending request and shepherded it through the approval process with our senator's staff. Uh, we also have, I believe, uh, Danielle Darling in college relations. We have a, a brand new staff member, member um, Maddie Rupert, who works in the development office. We have Lacell Hall, who's our uh, diversity director here with uh, one of the most important people in the room, Michaela Seltzer, who's our president of SGA. Um, trying to make sure I've not left anybody else out. Okay. Uh, we also have uh, Jason Mullen, our dean of uh, workforce development. And I don't, did any of our faculty make it this morning, uh, Jason? No, okay. Um, I would also like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Cardin's wife, uh, Myrna Edelman Cardin and my wife, Kathleen Corey Coppersmith, who also joined us this morning. Um, I'd now like to introduce our honored guests, both of whom are excellent friends of Chesapeake College. I believe this is the first time we've had our entire Congressional Senate delegation on campus at the same time in the history of Chesapeake. We are honored that they are here. I have worked with both of these gentlemen since my arrival at Chesapeake in 2018, and I'm extremely grateful for their advocacy and support of Chesapeake, as well as their uh, mutual work to support many elements of community college policy and legislation that supports our students in particular and work for, uh, workforce programs in general. They are both highly visible national level leaders who strongly support higher education. They care about the Eastern Shore, and I would like to personally thank them both for their work on the Higher Education Relief Act, which was critical to assist Chesapeake and community colleges across the country to get through the pandemic. I will first, oh, Chris Benefield just joined us. He's our Welding and Fabrications Program Director. Uh, and you're gonna be seeing some of you do the tours um, uh, later this morning. You'll be able to see some of the work he's been doing over the last year to get our program in good order. I'll introduce Senator Van Hollen, or I'm sorry, Senator Cardin first, and then he'll give us a few comments, and then uh, Senator Van Hollen will follow Senator Cardin. A third generation Marylander, uh, Senator Cardin is a national leader on health care, retirement security, the environment, and fiscal issues, while representing Maryland and the Eastern Shore in the U.S. Senate. He is a bipartisan leader who wields great influence on national issues while listening closely to his constituents. He regularly meets with all of the higher education presidents on the Eastern Shore, 
and I have seen the results of those discussions manifested in policy that has benefited community colleges. In particular, he led efforts to refine and improve legislation that resulted in the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund that provided assistance to community colleges and its students through the pandemic. For Chesapeake, this assistance was vital to our survival as an institution. First elected to the Senate in 2006, Senator Cardin serves as chair of the Small Business Entrepreneurship Committee, which is at the forefront of rebuilding our economy. He's a senior member of the Senate Foreign Relations, Finance, and Environment and Public Works Committees. Please join me in welcoming Senator Ben Cardin, a great friend of Chesapeake. Dr. Coppersmith, first of all, thank you very much uh, for everything you do. Thank you for acknowledging my, my two partners, Senator Van Hollen and Myrna. You have, <laughs> appreciate that very much. Uh, let me also acknowledge uh, Kim Cradiville, who's my eyes and ears on the Eastern Shore uh, for the incredible service that she provides to the people of Maryland here on the Eastern Shore. And first, to Chesapeake College. Thank you. You are providing incredible leadership here on the shore that has been so important for the economic growth and future of the Eastern Shore of Maryland. So congratulations. I know we have a lot of the partners, a lot of the, I met some of the foundation members, some of the board members. Thank you for doing this. And give yourselves a round of applause. 1.2 million competitive funds, you got it? Congratulations. <laughs> These are challenging times, but we have so much confidence. Senator Van Hollen and I have confidence that you will use the resources in order to create jobs, maintain economic opportunities, and do what we need to do so that Eastern Shore can maintain its magic while people want to be here and have its future. So congratulations for all that. I want to go back. The last two years have been incredible two years. You mentioned the American Rescue Plan and, and the, the funds we got for the community college system during that period of time. The money we got for local government officials that helped support your programs. We were able to maintain essential support so that the community colleges could continue to do its incredible service. It wasn't easy during that period of time. And then we passed the bipartisan infrastructure bill that dealt with the broadband issues. Well, if you're going to have an economic future in, in rural Maryland, broadband is so important to our future. And then we passed the Chips and Science Bill so that we could keep manufacturing here in the United States, that we could deal with our supply chain. So we're never going to be dependent on a country like China in order for our economic future. But for the Chips and Science Bill to work, we have to have the workforce. And that's what this $1.2 million is about, is having the trained workforce to meet the needs here in our country. You know, for a long time, we've we said, look, how about a four-year college degree in order to be able to, 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 to have a future? We now recognize that we need the technically trained individuals. High-tech manufacturing is critically important to our future. Welding is needed for our future, and you're providing that need here so the people that live here can get the training they need here and be able to stay here for the economic growth of the Eastern Shore of Maryland. That's why we're so excited about this opportunity and this grant. It's part of our strategy for the economic future of the Eastern Shore of Maryland, and Chesapeake College is providing that need. So we were honored to be able to use our discretionary dollars that we get for the Chesapeake College, because we know it will be very well invested. We're your partners. Senator Van Hahn and I talk frequently about Team Maryland. What you might not know is that the two of us coordinate all we do on the finance uh, appropriations issues. Senator Van Hahn serves on the Appropriations Committee. That's the committee that writes the checks out. It's great to have him in that position for Maryland. I serve on the Finance Committee. We share the responsibilities so we can do more for Maryland. And we can demonstrate that today by giving you this check. So we're honored to be your partners. We thank you for being the front line. We thank our local officials because we know it's difficult during any time to serve in government. We can hide in different parts of Maryland. You can't hide in the county. You've got you to be there to provide the services. We're proud to be part of your team, and we're proud that we can make 
this presentation to you today. Congratulations. Uh, you can... I normally introduce Senator Van Hollen, but I got such a great introduction from, from Dr. Coppersmith, I'm sure he wants to give an equally good introduction for Senator Van Hollen. I'll do my best. <laughs> Senator Van Hollen is a longtime partner and close friend of Chesapeake and has fought each day to ensure Marylanders and the Eastern Shore have access to high quality, affordable education and good jobs. Through his seat on the Appropriations Committee, Senator Van Hollen fought to secure this federal funding for our skilled trades programs. Senator Van Hollen has also introduced legislation to expand innovative partnerships between community colleges and high school industries with the Career Fund and Higher Education Act and has championed increasing the Pell Grant and the federal state partnership to support two years of free tuition across uh, access with access to community college and technical schools. Also a bipartisan leader, he has supported efforts to expand medical research, protect the Chesapeake Bay, and to support medical research for childhood cancer and for legislation to assist children with disabilities. Senator Van Hollen has also kept cl uh, close tabs with higher education leadership on the Eastern Shore in the past two years and has also exercised influence over key policy that supports community colleges during and after the pandemic. Please join me in welcoming Senator Chris Van Hollen. Well, thank you, President Coppersmith. It's wonderful to be with you and all the members of the Chesapeake College uh, family. Uh, it's good to see people in person. Um, Dr. Coppersmith and I were just talking about all our Zoom calls uh, over the years, uh, so it's good to be right back here on campus. Um, and thank you for mentioning uh, the important legislation, uh, the American Rescue Plan and the previous legislation, the Higher Education Relief Act. Uh, Senator Cardin and I hear, heard you all loud and clear uh, about the importance of us coming together uh, during that emergency to make sure that operations uh, could continue so you could pick right back up uh, and get moving. So thank you. Thank you to the College Board of Trustees. Thank you to the foundation uh, and the staff uh, and everybody who makes this place uh, run. And to our local officials and others uh, representing uh, counties uh, here in the, the Midshore area, uh, thank you uh, for what you're doing. As Senator Cardin said, you are on the front lines uh, every day, uh, and we look forward to continue to partner with you uh, for the success of Chesapeake College and uh, the livelihood of uh, families here uh, on the Eastern Shore. Um, so go Skipjacks as well. I saw the sign coming in, go Skipjacks. Uh, it is wonderful to be here with my friend, partner, uh, the head of, captain of, of Team Maryland, uh, Senator Cardin, as uh, he said, we work very closely together. And that, that helps on all issues when it comes to these earmarks, the congressional directed spending. When we cooperate, it means we are able to deliver more uh, for East, the Eastern Shore and the rest of Maryland. And so uh, it's worked very well together and I'm, I'm grateful for his leadership on the Finance Committee. Uh, on the Environment and Public Works Committee uh, and so many other committees. So thank you, thank you, Ben, for your leadership. Um, and Myrna, Myrna, his partner, it is great to see you uh, as well uh, here on the shore. Um, uh, uh, ben mentioned uh, Kim Craddeville, who does a wonderful job as his representative here on the shore. Uh, Alyssa Hastings, uh, who's our regional director is here. I want to thank her. For those of you who have not gotten a chance to know Alyssa, please uh, connect with uh, her and, and call either Alyssa or myself anytime on any of these issues. I'm so proud of our community college network in Maryland. We're some of the best community colleges in the entire world. And Chesapeake College is one of the treasures within our own system. Uh, because of the opportunities you provide uh, to students and others uh, of all ages uh, in our community. And that's why when we saw this proposal for the $1.2 million uh, to help workforce training and development, uh, both in welding um, and as part of your effort in advanced manufacturing, uh, we said yes. Uh, and these are competitive grants. We make decisions along with our, our teams and the members of the appropriations committees and other committees. Uh, but we have to be very proud of what we're doing because we put it on the internet for all to see. Um, and we couldn't have been more proud 
about putting this proposal forward because of the work that you're, you're doing here. Uh, you know, $1.2 million is a part of your overall efforts, and we want to be uh, a team player uh, with you. And the timing is, is critical. Uh, I think all of you know that we're, ex we're expected to see shortages uh, in the area of workforce for manufacturing. Uh, we're expecting nationally to be short about 300,000 welders just by next year. And we're also expected to be $2 million short uh, when it comes to advanced manufacturing. Senator Cardin mentioned the Chips and Science Act. Uh, the good news is that we are finally bringing home some of these critical supply chains, especially in the high-tech uh, area. But bringing home and investing and having companies invest more here <laughs> in order for them to successful, be successful, they need the workforce. Uh, and so that's what this is all about, both in Maryland uh, and around the country. Uh, your idea of a mobile training lab for welding is, it, it, it's brilliant because you're just taking the opportunity to people directly to students um, and it's great to have the head of the welding uh, department um, here uh, and also to support the advanced manufacturing uh, piece. Uh, let me just sum up, this is part of a larger strategy uh, as you know, one is to make sure that every student uh, regardless of family income uh, has a chance. Uh, to go to uh, Chesapeake College or other areas uh, and places that they want. Uh, so Senator Cardin and I continue to support Pell Grants, uh, which obviously is important uh, for affordability for so many uh, students, uh, as well as the TRIO program uh, to help, uh, help focus um, you know, high school students and others on college opportunities at places like uh, Chesapeake College. And finally, the, the CHIPS and Science Act in addition to that investment in advanced chips manufacturing, also does have a very important workforce component, STEM workforce component. Uh, and we look forward to working with you and partnering with you on that. Uh, you all know this, um, going to get, getting an education here um, is more than a getting a diploma. It is an opportunity and a pipeline. We wanna make sure that students who come through these doors and go through these programs are able to connect with good paying jobs that can support themselves, their family, uh, and help fulfill uh, their dreams. So thank you for being part of that dream making here at Chesapeake College. Um, and we look forward to continuing to partner with you in the years ahead. Thanks so much. Kim, did we wanna take any questions? It might be the media might wanna ask. So do we have any questions out there that we can respond to? Okay. Well, just real quick, uh, just a few details about what we're gonna be doing with this money, and I, I do wanna acknowledge our foundation. Uh, we raised over a million dollars in private funding uh, that went along with this uh, great public uh, support that we've gotten from both our federal and county partners. We have another 1.5 million that we were awarded by our four counties of the five that we serve. And uh, all of this going to uh, develop our manufacturing trades, uh, what I call the iron trades, uh, the foundation of American civilization in terms of uh, how we live and the things we expect to have on that work in our, in our daily lives, whether it's at home or, or, or where we work. Uh, Senator Van Allen mentioned, uh, mentioned the uh, mobile welding lab. That's gonna be an eight booth uh, mobile welding lab that will actually be able to go out to our high schools, out to our employers. Uh, I had experience in Montana working with a, a piece of equipment like that. We actually took welding to our correctional facilities. In particular, we worked with women's corrections in Montana. Life-changing experience. They got a basic certificate out of that experience, and they were able to exit the correctional system with a, with a real skill that they could uh, use for employment. We want to do that kind of thing here on the Eastern Shore. The other piece is advanced manufacturing. That's robotics. That's 3D printing. CAD CAM, uh, that's a brand new program for us and we're actually hiring our first uh, faculty member even as we speak to get that program off the, uh, uh, out to, uh, to actually being implemented within the next year. But this, this funding is uh, uh, just crucial uh, to making those kinds of things happen. We don't get funding from the state or our counties otherwise to invest in equipment, uh, in lab, minor lab renovations and all the things that are part of this, uh, this whole parcel of uh, initiatives to help us do a better job providing skilled trades education on the Eastern Shore. So I think if we don't have any questions, um, I'm available later if there are any questions from the media, but we do wanna take our senators on a tour of the MTC and the Queen Anne's Tech Building 
So I think, um, oh, we do have a, I guess we need to present a check. You gotta give you the money. We gotta give you the money, so. <laughs> the best part. <laughs>